بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الناس يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وكونوا مع الصادقين صدق الله العظيم الحمد لله brothers and sisters this is a very mubarak and blessed month that we have entered the month of Sha'ban and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was asked by Sayyidina Usama ibn Zayd radiyallahu anhu who said, Ya Rasulullah, Alam araka tasumu shahram min ash-shuhuri ma tasumu fi Sha'ban that I do not see you fasting in any month as I see you fasting in the month of Sha'ban. Qala thalika shahrun yaghfulu nasu anhu This is a month that a lot of people are unmindful of it. Many people are not aware of the blessings of this month. And it comes between Rajab and Ramadan. Rajab is a month that was very known amongst the time of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It was Ashurul Hurum, one of the sacred months. And the month of Ramadan, obviously, it's a month of blessings. So this month that comes right in between Ashurul Hurum and in between the month of Ramadan, it is a month that a lot of people are unmindful about it. A lot of people are unaware about it. A lot of people don't know of it. So he says, It is that month that the deeds are presented before the Lord of the worlds. So two points the Prophet ﷺ mentions is that a lot of people are unmindful of this month because Ramadan is coming and when something is coming then you're completely unmindful of where you're at because you're thinking about the future, you're not thinking about the now. And then secondly, the Prophet ﷺ mentioned a very special point. That in this month, our deeds are literally presented before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. فَأُحِبُّ أَنْ يُرْفَعَ عَمَلِي وَأَنَا صائم. I love that my deeds be presented to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala whilst I am fasting. And this is an authentic hadith narrated by Nasa'i in his sunan. With that being said, Imam ibn Rajab Hanbali rahimahullah, he mentioned something very beautiful. I know as Muslims, brothers and sisters, we're always looking at, okay, what is the sawab of this action and what is the sawab of that action? How much rewards am I getting when I do this particular thing? But there is, a, there is an objective sometimes behind the actions of the Prophet which are not so known. The objectives that are not so known, why the Prophet ﷺ used to do certain things. What was the philosophy behind it? What was the objective behind it? This is something that many of us are unaware of. Whatever we do, a lot of us we're thinking about the thawab. And that's good, we've got thawab down. Thawab all of us have understood. Now they're the, the spiritual realities, the islahi nafs, the rectification of the nafs. What is in that action that the Prophet was doing that I need to be aware of from the perspective of reformation of myself, transformation of my character. For example, we know all of these millions of rewards. If I recite Quran for every harf, I get 10 rewards. If I pray on Laylatul Qadr, I get the reward of 1,000 nights. If I perform, you know, uh, fasting in the month of Ramadan and standing to the Taraweeh, all my previous sins are forgiven. We know the ajr. We know the rewards. But brothers and sisters, a point that I want everyone to come to understand, what is the transformative effect in these deeds? In your character, in your akhlaq, in your relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Look at what he says. He says, huwa shahrun yaghfulu nasu anhu. It is a month that people are unmindful of. Ibn Rajab rahimahullah mentions something amazing here. He says that the Prophet Ali wasalam, wanted to do actions in that month in which people were unmindful. This teaches us something, is to be aware of those actions to be aware of those deeds, to be aware of those practices, that when people are unmindful, we should be remembering. And this is, this is a, a thing where, as a believer, we are opportunist. 
the rewards are magnified and the rewards are multiplied to perform an action in a time and in a place where people are completely unmindful and nobody is remembering Allah. This is a very important point. Because a lot of people say, Oh, Shaykh, I wish that I live in Mecca and Medina. When I go, when you go to Haramain al-Sharifain, I know that the dream and the wish of every believer is, I wish I could live in Haramain al-Sharifain forever and ever. But brothers and sisters, there is a very beautiful statement of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam that the, a person doing deeds in that place where nobody is doing any deeds, what's the reason why we want to be in Haramain al-Sharifain all the time? Why is it that I wish I could live in a Muslim country? Alhamdulillah, this is very, very good. And we should, don't get me wrong. I'm not undermining that. But the point is, what's the reason? Is it really, for what reason is it? It's because it's just easier for us. We like the easy way. We're just more lazier. And when we're in an environment like that, it just makes it, it that's not wrong. I'm not saying that is wrong. That's very good. All of us should wish that. But where is the high level rewards? Where is the rewards where subhanallah, when you, were, when you were doing it, your deed is multiplied more than anywhere else. It is those deeds that is done in the places and in the times where people are not doing anything. Let me ask you, after the fard prayer, after the five daily prayers, which is fard upon you, which salah, which action is more beloved to Allah than any other action? Which salah is more beloved to Allah than any other salah? Is salat tahajjud Is qiyamul layl? Why is that? Because nobody is watching you. Nobody is seeing you. Because it is so difficult to do tarkul hujud. Ma ma'ana tahajjud? Tarkul hujud. To abandon your sleep. To abandon your comfort. To abandon your ease and your luxury. That, that tahajjud, tarkul hujud, leaving your comfort, the deeds are multiplied in that. That is why Allah Azza wa Jal mentions in the Quran, تَتَجَافَ جُنُوبُهُمْ عَنِ الْمَضَاجِعِ يَدْعُونَ رَبَّهُمْ خَوْفًا وَطَمَعًا وَمِمَّا رَزَقْنَاهُمْ يُنْفِقُونَ فَلَا تَعْلَمُ نَفْسٌ مَّا أُخْفِيَ لَهُمْ مِنْ قُرَّةِ أَعْيُنْ جَزَاءً بِمَا كَانُوا يَعْمَلُونَ Allah Azza wa Jal, when He talks about tahajjud, تَتَجَافَ جُنُوبُهُمْ عَنِ الْمَضَاجِعِ Their sides, the believers, the special believers of Allah Azza wa Jal, their sides remain away from their beds, seeking the pleasure of their Lord and fearing the, 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 the punishment of their, of their Lord. And then Allah Azza wa Jal says, the reward of Jannah is for them. فَلَا تَعْلَمُ نَفْسٌ مَا أُخْفِيَ لَهُمْ مِنْ قُرَّةِ أَعْيُنْ no soul knows that which his Lord has hidden for him in the pleasures and enjoyments of paradise. This reward has not been mentioned for anything. It's mentioned for tahajjud. Why? Because it is a time and it is a place where everybody is sleeping. That person when he's awake, when everybody is asleep, his reward is multiplied to such an extent that no other person get it that gets that award. Shaban is a month where the Prophet said people are unaware. People don't fast in this month. Just like in Tahajjud, people are not praying in that time. But people are not fasting in this month. That is why I love to fast in this month when nobody is fasting in this month. For you as a student in college, you are a student in university and college, MashaAllah, our sisters, who are the only one in the school wearing the hijab. Wallahi, you are getting more reward to wear hijab in your university and your college than the sisters that are living in Mecca and Medina. I guarantee you that. He said, oh, how can you say that? Yes, more than in Mecca and Medina. Who said this? The Prophet ﷺ said in this hadith that I would like to read before you, hadith that is narrated in Sahih Muslim. Narrated by Ma'qal ibn Yasar radiallahu anhu, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa said, Al-ibadatu fil haraj tahijratin ilayya, that worshipping Allah in the time of difficulties, worshipping Allah in the time of haraj, bima'na al-fitna, Worshipping Allah Ta'ala in the time when there is fitna, when there is fasad. Worshipping Allah in the time where holding, where practicing your deen is like holding on to a burning coal. To wear your hijab in the place where it's like wearing a coal, wearing burning coal, where everybody is maybe judging you. 
or people are not respecting you, or people are, you know, stereotyping you. And when you do that action in a place and in a time where nobody is doing it, you inshallah get the reward. What the Prophet is saying here, to worship Allah, to obey Allah, to draw nearness to Allah in a place and in a time in which there is fitna, it is like making hijrah to me. Allahu Akbar. What, subhanallah, what is the reward of hijrah? As-sabiqoon al-awwaloon min al-muhajireen wal-ansar wal-lazeen attaba'uhum bi-ihsan radiyallahu anhum radu'an. What did Allah Ta'ala say about the muhajireen? What did Allah Ta'ala say about the ansar? That those who make hijrah for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah is pleased with them. So my dear brothers and sisters, we always look for the easy route. But some of these ahadith, we look at it from the perspective of thawab. We don't look at it from the perspective of it is an opportunity to do something very, very special. All of our brothers and sisters, especially, mashallah, our youth, especially our brothers that are working in the corporate world, you are praying salah, or you are wearing the hijab, or you are practicing your deen, or you are preserving your faith in a place and in a time where it is very difficult for you to preserve your faith. Subhanallah, you get not a normal reward. You don't get a normal ajr. You get the reward of al-ibadatu fil haraj kahijratin ilayya. Kahijratin ilayya. Worshipping Allah in the times and in the places of fitna, in the times and places where it is difficult to practice your deen, you are getting the reward of making hijrah to the Prophet. To the Prophet. Sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. Subhanallah. It also, another hadith. This is actually, people say that it is a hadith, but it is the statement of one of the tabi'een. One of the people who came after the time of the Sahaba. He said, ذَاكِرُ اللَّهِ فِي الْغَافِلِينَ مَثَلُ الَّذِي يُقَاتِلُ عَنِ الْفَارِينَ He says, the one who remembers Allah when everybody is forgetful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Brothers and sisters, right now, where we are in our time, where we are in our place, the believers who, despite all of the difficulties that they have, you have school, you have work, you have all these other things that are pulling us away, and then despite that, you are coming to Salatul Jumu'ah in the middle of the day. This is not a Muslim country. Where subhanAllah, your adhan, everybody's going to the masjid, everybody's walking to the masjid. Rather, you see people, you know, unmindful. You see people running away from the masjid. In that place, look at what has been mentioned by one of the salaf. May Allah be pleased with them. ذاكر الله في الغافلين مثل الذي يقاتل عن الفارين the one who is remembering Allah when everyone is forgetful of Allah is like the example of the one who is continuing to fight in the path of Allah when everybody is running away from the battlefield. When everyone is running away from the battlefield, you are stepping forth and you are standing against the enemy. Subhanallah. They are giving the example of the one who stands in the worship of Allah, the one who is making the dhikr of Allah, in the time and place where everyone is forgetful. You are like mujahid fi sabilillah. You are like a warrior in the path of Allah when everybody is retreating. وَذَاكِرُ اللَّهِ فِي الْغَافِلِينَ كَالْمِصْبَاحِ فِي الْبَيْتِ الْمُظْلِمِ كَالْمِصْبَاحِ فِي بَيْتِ الْمُظْلِمِ And the one who remembers Allah, when everybody is forgetful, it is like a lamp in a dark house. Subhanallah. One lamp in a dark house, that example, the one who is, that sister who is wearing hijab in the middle of all these, in the entire environment where everybody is forgetful. Those people who are remembering Allah when everybody is forgetful. That young man who is worshipping, when everybody is forgetting worship, you are like that lamp in the middle of a dark room. Subhanallah. وَذَاكِرُ اللَّهِ فِي الْغَافِلِينَ كَمَثَلَ الشَّجَرَةِ الْخَضْرَاءِ فِي وَسَطِ الشَّجَرِ الَّذِي قَدْ تَحَاتُ مِنَ الصَّرِيدِ and the one who remembers Allah in an environment and in a time and place where everybody is forgetful, then your example is like that tree that is blossoming, the tree that is blooming in the middle of the autumn when all the trees have lost their leaves. Subhanallah. وَذَاكِرُ اللَّهِ فِي الْغَافِلِينَ كَمَثَلِ الشَّجَرَةِ الْخَضْرَاءِ فِي وَسَطِ الشَّجَرِ الَّذِي قَدْ تَحَاتُ مِنَ الصَّرِيدِ 
that all the leaves have fallen because of the autumn. And you are the one that is blossoming from amongst all the other trees. وَذَاكِرُ اللَّهِ فِي الْغَافِلِينَ يَغْفِرُ اللَّهُ لَهُ بِعَدَدِ كُلِّ فَصِيحٍ وَأَعْجَمٍ And the one who Ta'ala, the one who remembers Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala amongst the forgetful ones, he is like the one who Allah will continue to forgive his sins, right? For amongst all the others, you will have special attention from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَذَاكِرُ اللَّهِ فِي الْغَافِلِينَ يَعْرِفُهُ اللَّهُ عَزَّ وَجَلْ يُعَرِّفُهُ اللَّهُ عَزَّ وَجَلْ مَقْعَدَهُ مِنَ الْجَنَّةِ And the one who remembers Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala amongst those who have forgotten, right? The one who remembers and has forgotten, then Allah will remember you. Allah will remember you in a very, very special place at a time when you need it most. When you remember Allah and nobody is remembering Him, Allah will remember you in a time when you need Him most. مَنْ آثَرَ اللَّهَ عَلَىٰ غَيْرِهِ آثَرَهُ اللَّهُ عَلَىٰ غَيْرِهِ The one who prefers Allah over all else, Allah will prefer him over all else. Subhanallah. So these times and places, and this Mubarak month of Sha'ban, which is the month where the deeds are lifted for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, be that one. Say that I want to be that one. That one that I am remembering Allah when nobody is remembering. Be that one that says, I want to wear the hijab when no one is wearing the hijab. Be that one. Don't be the one that's taking the easy route. Be the one that's standing out. Don't be afraid to be the one who's standing out because this is the attention that Allah is giving you. He said, oh, I don't want to bring the attention to myself. When you're bringing the attention to yourself, Allah's attention is towards you. The angel's attention is towards you. The pious people's attention is towards you. And the elevation from Allah and the rewards from Allah is towards you. Don't be afraid to be the odd man or the odd woman out because the rewards for that is immense. The rewards for that is as the Messenger of Allah said, the rewards for that is like making hijrah to the Prophet himself. Don't be afraid to be the odd man out or the odd woman out. This is what the fasting of the month of Sha'aban one of the teachings. Everybody knows the reward. Nobody knows what's the, the, the reality or the transformative effects in that action that what Allah Azza wa Jal wants me to become. He wants you to become that one that becomes a leader. Inna Ibrahim kana ummah. Inna Ibrahim kana ummatan. Do you know what this means? Ibrahim alayhi salam was an ummah by himself. That's it. Nobody was with him. Just his wife. He was at that time one Muslim. Only one. And he says, Wa ana awwalul Muslimin. He says in the Quran, Kana ummatan, wa ana awwalul Muslimin. I am the first of the Muslims. I don't care if there's anyone with me. Allahu Akbar. I am enough. My Lord is enough. Inna ma'ya rabbi sayahdeen. Musa alayhi salam, what did he say? His whole tribe said, Oh Musa, you're, you're sending us to the slaughter. You're sending us to the slaughter. What did Musa alayhi salam say? I don't need you. Inna ma'ya rabbi sayahdeen. Fir'aun's army is behind him. The sea is in front of him. The ocean is in front of him. Fir'aun's army of 100,000 is behind him. And his people are doubting him. What does he say at that moment? Inna ma'ya rabbi. With me is my Lord. He is enough for me. Sayahdeen. He will be a guide for me. This is how, my dear brothers and sisters, the Anbiya Ali Musalam were an Ummah. The Prophet said about Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, Inna, inna Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, Inna Abdullah kana Ummah. He said that about two, three Sahaba, just they themselves, Mu'adh ibn Jabal, kana Ummah. What can you imagine that a person, you or any one of you, when you are in your school, when you are at your work, when you are in society, when you are in this environment and you are alone, never feel bad, never feel down. You are like that light. You are like that lamp that is shining all the darkness. You are that ummah standing alone and Allah will raise you on the day of judgment with that honor. So this Mubarak month, the Prophet ﷺ wants us to think and ponder. This is that month I like to fast when nobody is fasting. Because that action to do it when nobody else is doing it gives you such a status and maqam, you become an ummah. 
a nation on your own, my Allah is enough for me. May Allah give us the tawfiq to understand the reality of these actions. Wa akhiru dawana alhamdulillah rabbil alameen.